internet. Don't mind, fuck it! <laughs> I'm going to video on my end, I think it's almost time. I like how the title of the stream is for trying to get Eliza. Oh man, I always fucked that up, yo. What's up, Internet? You know what I learned today? What did you learn today, Eric? I learned something about um, this capturing, whole capturing thing I do here that I didn't know. Uh, and I'm very proud of myself because it was a problem that I was having. This monitor that I'm using is a shitty aspect ratio. It's one of those, like, it's a TV. It's not a monitor. So every Ooh. time I do anything, right up here, right here in this big black section right here, uh, was supposed to be uh, a video capture of the web page here, right? But I realized right. that every time I do that, it resets, it, it turns black because of the, the uh, aspect ratio of this television. I didn't know that that was the reason, but I just discovered it right now it just came to me because it fucked up right now you guys are supposed to be able to see my website so okay that didn't work uh i could fix it but maybe i will maybe i won't either way that song was fucking sick it was uh the chemical plant zone and the guy who suggested it was uh creepy timmy from the chat room and then this overlay which I think it looks pretty fucking good. I think it looks great, actually. It would have looked much better. better than last time. Right, yeah, much better than last time. And it would have looked a lot better if I didn't fuck that thing up right up there. Um, but that I just learned how to do that. This is a process, Internet. You know, I got to learn these things. So th that was the issue with that. So either ignore that big-ass black square or pretend like something cool is in there. Um, or maybe just for – you guys will have to bear with me, okay? This is all a learning process. But since – I fucked that up. Maybe I can take that. Ah, you know what? I'm gonna. I'm not gonna mess with it. I'm gonna end up breaking it. Anyway, I'm joined by Beal. How's it going, Beal? Oh, before I say hi to Beal, Beal, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Beal. Don't say hi. The guy who made this uh, overlay, his name is hashtag Dope. Huge thanks to him. I really appreciate that. He's in the chat. I think he's from Sweden or some death metal country like that. So big thanks to him for helping me out with that. He saw that I was in dire need of an overlay last week. Everyone was talking shit like a bunch of assholes. So um, that's cool. Uh, appreciate that. Anyway, Beal, how's it going, man? Uh, you've uh, blessed us with your presence today. What's it's up? Pretty good. Sorry for being a little bit late. I was on the way back home from a family dinner. Okay. Threw up on the way, eat, but dude? nice making time. I had some Korean sun tofu. Sounds gross. It's pretty, pretty smooth. Smooth. On the way up and down. You already digested it. <laughs> You're not a human. I knew it. Anyway, all right, cool, cool. Uh, glad to have you on. Uh, I can always count on uh, Beal. Um, so yesterday's Wednesday Night Fights, first topic at hand, was a relatively interesting Wednesday Night Fights. Um, first of all, we had a decent turnout for Tekken at 20 entrants, which is really 20, good, yeah. especially for these days. Uh, and Soul Calibur also had a side tournament, and they got... Um, 11, right? Beal, or was it 13? Uh, Soul Calibur actually got 12. It, it actually matched up with Injustice and They're Alive. So all these new games that came out are, are equal with this game that came out, like, what, 10 years ago? Yeah, 10-year-old game is getting the same numbers as Injustice and Dead or Alive. Now, what I don't get is why they don't put Soul Calibur HD Online on the stream. 
I mean, if we're getting the same numbers, maybe if we consistently get good numbers for Soul Calibur 2, they'll put it up on stream. Because I think if they put it up on stream, people will become a little more interested in it. I'm hoping so, but I believe the problem is that Tecmo actually helps fund, you know, when I fight. So they actually got, you know, the, the little money hat in there, like, you know, sort of hand in the money bin. I don't uh, know what you that, just said, but go on. Uh, what I'm saying is that Namco I'm kidding. Isn't I know really what you just said. The game. <laughs> as much as Tecmo was trying to support their life and uh, NetherRealms was supporting Injustice. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's all about, you know, the old federales, you know, Internet. So I don't know how that's going to work. Uh, yesterday, Commando was like, this is it's not a Wednesday Night Fights game. So I don't know. But either way, whether or not they end up showing it on stream, I mean, I'm interested because... I've been doing pretty well, first of all. But secondly, it's so much fun. I mean, I really, really enjoy playing that game. And it looks like everyone else who's been entering is having fun, too. Why not? We're already having Tekken there. Uh, some of the Tekken players like playing Soul Calibur. And what's interesting to me is that um, a lot of the people who entered the last two times weren't there yesterday. But there were other people there to fill in their spots that were gone. So if so far in the three tournaments that we had... If everyone who's entered in any of those three came at the same day, we could get like 20 people, you know, so yeah, pretty easy. that's pretty impressive. I mean, to me, it's pretty impressive. Yesterday, we had Vicious Suicide there, who is a Evo Top 8 qualifier and an old school Yoshi player. Uh, he got his shit pushed in by myself, but it's really nice to see old school players coming out and playing. Devil X Hollywood, who is actually a legend in that game, one of my most difficult uh, opponents historically in any game he's always been really really tough to beat he was there oh, yeah. he didn't get to enter but uh, he said he's interested in playing so I don't know yeah. I don't know uh, what uh, that means for that game what that means for the community but I definitely think that it's not dead you know there are people that are interested in playing that for sure what are your thoughts yeah. on that Bill? yeah there's definitely life in that game uh, Bell X would have probably entered if he didn't show up you know, too late to sign up but yeah, there's, uh, like, people are watching it. It was actually a pretty hype tournament. People were pretty excited for it. Yeah, I agree. There were matches that people were really glued to watching. There, was a, there were some players that were new that I had never seen before. And, you know, when I sat down to play one of those guys... Uh, Tommy, I forget his name. He was a sh uh, X player, and I was uh, thinking, Blue Boy. Yeah, Blue Boy. I had never seen him or heard of him, and Tommy was like, you know, this guy's really good. Watch out! So I sit down to play him, and you know, it was exciting because I don't know who this player is, and he's playing Shanghua, the best character in that game. So it was really nice getting that sensation of like, oh shit, you know, this is a dangerous opponent, and I'm playing a game that I know how to play. And it was just, I really enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. And hopefully, uh, we continue to have tournaments for that game because I'm loving that shit. Yeah, apparently he was, uh, he was a pretty good Soul Calibur 5 player. And he lives down the street from Tommy. So, he's got that training there. Yeah, that's what they were saying. So, uh, you know, I'm really, I'm happy about that and excited. And that's a good point. Someone in the chat was asking about Flo uh, in that game. Maybe if Flo, you know, has some time, maybe he can come out to a Wednesday Night Fights and play me in the, you know, Soul Calibur. That would be a lot of fun. You know, I, yeah, a lot, a, uh, a lot of people came down here for the first time because uh, it was actually tweeted by Super Dojo and IE Battlegrounds that were having a Soul Calibur 2 tournament. Yeah, a lot of people don't even know. So maybe if uh, Flo catches wind, hopefully he'll make it out. And whoever else is interested in the game can make it out because it's a lot of fun and I'm loving that shit. So yeah, everyone, spam Flo's Twitter. Don't do that. <laughs> but, you know, I'm sure he'll realize here. I mean, he's busy. Isn't he like traveling everywhere or whatever? But eventually he'll show up, I'm sure. Yeah, he's been streaming some retro games or some, some crap. But yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, another thing that I've noticed that is a real pain in the ass is for the last three weeks, Google Hangouts has been fucking sucking butt cheeks. I don't know what the problem is, but every time you make a phone call, it doesn't matter whether it's a one person two-way or three-way phone call it always has this enormous delay so every time i say anything let's say i'm talking to beal if i say hey beal i don't understand what you just said beal would just take 30 seconds to respond to that so uh, that's been really throwing a wrench in the gears around this uh, atp live operation it's been a real pain in the ass but uh anyway moving on to tekken yesterday so run it black made his appearance on top of that we had 
basically all the regulars made it except for Riksta. Everyone was there. We had Sukin, we had uh, Rip, Just Frame James, Sonkin, Tim. Uh, I mean, everyone was there. That Yojimbo guy, I forgot his, the Yoshi King player. Um, I mean, tons of people were there. 20 entrants, uh, really stacked tournament. Uh, and it was really interesting for me because I've been playing a lot of online, right? And I've right. been losing a lot online, a ton, right? But I have really been, and Charles, uh, if, I don't know if you guys in the chat have been tuning into my stream lately, but Charles, has, whenever he's been around, he's always been kind of enforcing the, don't forget, dude, you got to have a good attitude when you're playing online or you're wasting your fucking time. And you got to basically absorb the parts of online that are beneficial, whatnot, et cetera, et cetera. And I've been trying to have a really positive attitude uh, while playing online, even though it's very hard to maintain that attitude. But, you know, I genuinely felt like um, though all my online matches have been producing losses, uh, when I went offline, I was able to at least feel OK, like I, not that rusty, you know. And another tip that I took was from actually Reality, who's a subscriber on this channel. He just gave randomly. He just gave me a tip. He was like, hey, you know what, Eris, you always play online right before Wednesday Night Fights and then you go there and then you get fucked up. Maybe before you go and play at Wednesday Night Fights, you should try shaking off some of that rust in practice mode for like an hour. And that's one thing I did before Wednesday Night Fights. I just turned on practice mode, no stream, no nothing. And I just, you know, tinkered around, tried the way MYK mentioned it when he was on the show. He was like, just go into different angles and just keep. I, I tried to avoid position resetting and I just keep in practice mode doing different combos from different angles and seeing what I could get out of each angle that was kind of my idea right and i genuinely feel like i was able to shake off the the timing of online and you know get a, get into the groove of offline so uh that's the the attitude i went uh into the tournament with uh for me i don't remember exactly what order uh things went in but i played against tim i played against uh tom, vietnam tom i then played against uh, i think just frame james and then he put me into losers and then in losers i played against myk and rip and then that put me up against i think that put me in losers finals so then at that point uh top three was myself in losers finals just frame james and uh run it black Good black yes so i'm commentating losers finals and run it black really kicks the shit out of James. Like, I was not expecting that to happen. In my mind, James was supposed to beat run it black, and then I was supposed to beat run it black in losers, which I would have felt a lot more comfortable in that scenario, in, in that scenario than I would in grand finals having to beat him two times. But regardless, so he ends up uh, beating uh, James, sending James to losers, causing a double jeopardy match between myself and James. In this double jeopardy match, the I think the round counts were 3-0, 3-0, and then final game, uh, I ended up beating Just Frame James, which is a rarity. Now, uh, at this point, I want to make a make it clear because I played the Feng Wang team last uh, last night, and I happened to be very proud of my own performance yesterday because m every guy that I had to go through to get to grand finals is lately especially a guy that's been kicking the shit out of me so james has been kicking the shit out of me since evo rip has been kicking the shit out of me for the last few months and myk even though when the game first came out for months and months i was doing a lot better than he was uh, against him uh lately he's been fucking me up too so i had to go through all these guys to get to grand finals and i feel really good about the way i played now grand finals comes up uh it's me and um run it black First game goes really well. Everything is going well. And then all of a sudden I hear people's cars are getting towed. <laughs> what the fuck's going on? People's cars are getting towed in the parking lot in the middle of fucking grand finals. <laughs> so I'm like, I, anyway, so rip running black. I mean, he ended up kicking the shit out of me after the first game of uh, grand finals. He beat me 2-0 straight, uh, leading him to victory in his first Wednesday night fights. Uh, congratulations to him. Uh, it seems as though... Wednesday Night Fights is the place to be if you've never won a tournament uh, because new people are winning them all the time, you know? Um, so that's interesting. That was a really fun tournament. For those of you wondering, uh, I've been asked this a lot today. 
but uh, there were five cars towed from Super Arcade. Luckily, my car was uh, unaffected by this uh, terrible, uh, uh, you know, occurrence. But what happened is, you know, Super Arcade is in a plaza that's like an L shape. And in front of the arcade allegedly is one parking lot and the side of the arcade is another parking lot owned by another company. And they called the tow trucks and were like, boom, tow all this shit. So five people got their cars towed, three of which were Just Frame James, Rip, and uh, Cynic. Cynic. Yeah, so the three of them got their cars towed, which is really fucked up. Uh, They all ended up having to get, I don't know how much they ended up paying, but it's really fucked up that that happened. Uh, Even though technically they were not supposed to park there, Technically, everyone has been doing that for years, so I don't know how to explain it. It's just one of those fucked up scenarios, you know. Yeah, Which... I'm just I'm just hoping that it doesn't really affect turnouts for future tournaments because that that is not a good thing. Good luck. It's is it about like two hundred to four hundred dollars? Yeah, uh, that is definitely not cheap, uh, and it's fucked up because it's just right out of the cosmos. It's like you just got fucked. It's like a like a fucking meteorite just came out of the sky and fucked you right in the butthole, you know? And that really sucks. You know, you're you're at an arcade trying to have fun and these douchebags. And the most fucked up thing is they were thinking, okay, we can band together and go to... Like Cynic was thinking, we'll go to the tow truck company and we'll just hella tell them. We'll complain and shit. Tow truck no. companies are like the most impervious to anger. They, they're the devil. Yeah, no, but it's not that they're the devil. They're just perfectly immune, 100% uh, anger resistant. You know, like, you know how they say the customer is always right? It's the complete opposite. No matter what, you're wrong at a tow truck company. It's literally their job. There is never a customer at a tow truck company at a tow yard that is happy. They're always going to be fucking pissed every percent, 100% of the time. You know, so yeah. unfortunately yeah. for those guys, that happened. Um, really sucks. Um but anyway, I think it was a really interesting tournament. I also got to commentate DOA for the first time with uh, Rip yesterday. So that was pretty cool. I had a lot of fun doing that. Um, but is there anything else about uh, yesterday that I might be missing? I think I covered all bases, Beal. Um, I believe that sh- should be... Oh, by everything. the way, yeah. sorry, I didn't mention BL got second in Soul Calibur to myself. This is the second time, so he is definitely showing consistency. Uh, consistently uh, getting rolled up by Voludo, but oh. still doing very well. Nice job, Beal. Just, just, just you wait until I remember how to use Raphael against that Voludo. Yeah, he's, he only used to use one move, dude. B, 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 B. How could you forget that? I just reminded you. Oh, now I know. <laughs> yeah, I, didn't you try that last time? Um, it, it actually got like uh, two or so rounds, but um, the issue I found out in that matchup with Mr. Rugi against Voldo was that a, a lot of my two two eight eight Bs were completely whiffing, and I don't remember that happening before in um in the old school days. You're thinking it, about uh, I think you're thinking about Soul Calibur four and five, because in Soul Calibur two, if you do a B move, if you do a linear move, I'm I'm behind you already. It's like step guard is so good in that game, you know? I remember that, that move having a a wider hitbox than what it feels like like right now, but Well, you, you know, know you can do that move in two directions. So if I go to the right, you could do two two. If I go to the left, you could do eight eight. And it tr- has more tracking in that direction because he brings his sword down on one side or the other side. You know what I mean? Yeah, but uh, actually when I did that, it, it was stepped as well, even on the side that it was supposed to track on. So I think this might be another POW issue. I don't but, think you know, so. <laughs> I, I, I highly doubt it because this that I have a lot of experience against Mitsurugi, and I used to get around that character 24-7. You're using the wrong moves, player. We can, we can have a discussion about that in the future. Maybe I'll do a Mitsurugi right. tutorial, and then you can watch that. You know what I mean? Might work out. But but yeah, the other than that, the, the we were talking about the, the, some of the POW issues with Soul Calibur 2 HD Online. Um, originally, before the guys with the PS3 console got there, we were actually playing on the Xbox 360, and that version actually has tremendous slowdown whenever you, there's like, like a Guard Impact or a Guard Crush. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it seems like the um, Xbox version. It seems like the game in general has a problem dealing with Guard Impacts, the animation of a Guard Impact. Now, on the Xbox, this problem is a lot uh, more prevalent. Uh, you can tell if people are GIing a lot, you can see the frame rate kind of chugging along. But in uh, as, as of right now, and I put one video up of this, uh, 
Cervantes, whatever it's called, Pirate's Booty move, he uh, booty. that move is basically broken. If it auto GIs almost every A from what I've seen, it's not every single A. Some A's it can auto GI and it does not freeze the system. But some A's, if you use that move and it simply does what it's supposed to do, it'll hard lock up your system. And I put a YouTube video out showing that. Um, but you know, I don't know if that's gonna get fixed. Uh, well, is that what you were gonna bring up, Bill? Uh, yeah, you know, I just want to bring up your video about it because that actually happened at one of the earlier Soccer 2 tournaments we, that we had. Right. Yeah, that uh, Binkley was uh, playing, I think. And, you know, it's kind of fucked up. Luckily, that it's really easy to tell people, hey, don't use that move. And thankfully, that move is not really 100 million percent essential to Cervantes. It's not like the greatest move in the world. Uh, personally, I think that except for the very rare occasion where you want to use it to ring out behind you, I don't think that that move is even worth it. I'd rather do a regular GI and go for standard uh, post -GI. Well, right now, yeah, right now it feels like a Cervantes nerf. Um, from what I was told with Binkley, he always used that move as a counter to Poseidon the Tide only because it was like a massive horizontal move. Yeah, you could see and that. That's true. It, Good point. And it worked really well against that. But now he doesn't have that option and you know, he has to figure out a new punishes. And also he was telling me that Cervantes' Afro no longer rings out on certain levels. Really? That's, that's what it's feeling like. Hmm. So, you know the one where he stabs yeah, you? Yeah, and yeah, yeah, the it double stab. Face, face forward. He, he was trying to do that on one of the, like, the circular stages with no walls and it just, it wasn't happening. Hmm. And he said he was able to get that pro to ring out on some other stages. Hmm, interesting. Uh, well, that sucks. I did. Uh, I have seen him try that in tournament recently, and it didn't throw. Uh, it didn't ring out. So I don't know. It's interesting. We're learning more because you know Cervantes is an unlockable character. So maybe, I mean, that's ridiculous. What does that mean? Unlockable characters were not tested because they were too hard to unlock. Nobody wanted to do the legendary souls mode or whatever it's called. I don't get it. Yeah. This this PAL version came up before the newer NTSC version, I believe. So they, I guess they didn't iron out all the kinks yet. Yeah, that's such a that's such a weird case. But um, I don't know. I hope they fix that issue. If they do fix that issue, um, someone told me that Xbox and PS3 get one free update. So I don't know. That well, would be cool. I believe on PS3, they, they get multiple free updates. On the Xbox, they get one free like actual p full patch. And then any subsequent update would actually cost money, but a lot of a lot of studios are getting around that by using um, like like little minor update patches that they can they can push through. Hmm. Well, I mean, I guess at this point it would definitely it wouldn't be free uh, on Namco's end, but they wouldn't have to pay for the the. I think they still have to probably pay for um, QA testing through Sony and Microsoft, but they don't actually have to pay for the patch to go through as far as I know. And it would cost them man hours on their end for developing the the changes and fixes. But I mean, dude, the game costs 20 bucks and that's already a pretty steep price tag, especially from what a lot of people have said they feel. So it's one of the highest, like uh, highest costing arcade games. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Uh, 20 bucks is a lot of money. I mean, I personally think it's worth it, but a lot of people aren't happy with the purchase. So I think if they fix this, it would be a really nice, like, um, high five to everyone that's really, like, supported the game. Um, yeah, I was talking to a Honey Badger, and he was hoping that this, this large constant turnout can you know, act as a voice to Namco saying, hey, this is how we would like our Soul Calibers. We don't want this, you know, single-player stuff. We want, you know, to focus on this really good well-designed fighting game. I mean, that's the theory, uh, but we, didn't, we you never know if it's going to happen. I don't think it's impossible, though. Um, that's what we're hoping for. Yeah. yeah, I don't think it's impossible. It's just, uh, it's just a matter of if they decide that it's worth it monetarily for them. Um, now, uh, so that's, that's the topic. We're talking about online downloadable stuff like that. And, you know, today I woke up in the morning and I, I, the Internet buzz was, you know, talking about Eliza being available on Tekken Resolute for PlayStation now. However, it was on, it's only available today for Europe and Japan. So I had to go on a fucking wild goose chase trying to figure out how to get a Japanese PSN account, which I was able to do by looking up a YouTube video, which, you know, I got to tell you, I love that you could just go on YouTube and ask it a question and somebody has made a tutorial for it. That is just like the best 
thing about YouTube. And that is the reason why I'm always putting out tutorials. I think that the concept of putting out tutorials is very cool. And I think if anyone knows how to do anything, just flood YouTube with tutorials on how to do stuff, how to use a character, how to do a technique or whatever, because it's really a good idea. You know, it helps a lot of people. So uh, yeah, YouTube's great. Yeah, YouTube. Um, actually, actually, Eris, have you been hit by the new content ID uh, problems yet? Good question. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't <laughs> fucking know, man. I was talking to Rip about this. And you know what's funny? I was just saying YouTube is great. YouTube is great in that context. But in the context of it being compared to itself of previous years, YouTube sucks eight dicks. Because <laughs> lately, YouTube has been fucking everything up. Hangouts has been fucking up. I cannot stand that shit. Comments are all sorted Google. in a retarded way. I mean, YouTube sucks and is very good at the same time. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't think so. As far as I know, I don't think I've been hit with any content ID stuff. Uh, Rip told me a couple of his videos have been, uh, affected. I think James Chen and David were telling me that they, they have been affected. M Maximilian, a lot of people have been affected, but thankfully, uh, knock on wood, I have not been affected by this as of yet. Um, I don't know. Well, like, yeah, with, uh, Ultra David and... And uh, James Chen, they, they were able to avoid it or get around it by uh, contacting Capcom because Capcom is actually being very friendly with this content ID problem. You can just contact them. They're like, all right, we allow it. Here's our permission. Yeah. I don't know if Napco is doing the exact same thing, though. But I, it, I actually they should. saw some. Uh, I wish I uh, saved the tweet, but someone retweeted a tweet from someone saying, like, if you have any problems with content ID on YouTube, contact Namco at whatever the thing was and then put it in there and we'll remove it that that I saw a tweet somewhere so uh, I don't have the information on that but it is available uh, out there um, another thing I wanted to mention which is YouTube related I was gonna get to the Tekken Resolute thing and I'll still get to that but um, right. oh yeah flying wonky this is two things I want to talk about. So Flying Wonky has a YouTube channel in which he uploads a lot of Japanese Tekken content. And he's done a lot for the Tekken scene. He's really like one of the pillars of the Tekken scene as of right now. Uh, I noticed that in one of the posts that he put up on ATP, on avoidingthepuddle.com, uh, where he said he's going to have a new YouTube channel for 2014 next year because he has a restriction on, on his, um, what do you call it, his video length. Now, first of all, I wanted to say that everyone should keep an eye out for that. I think it's Flying Wonky 2014, uh, which is the YouTube channel. However, I also want to tell Wonky, hey, man, shoot me an email and let's see about getting you partnered, right? I don't know if this is something you're interested in, but I think he has like a shitload of subscribers on YouTube at like 4,000 or something. If you got 4,000 subscribers on YouTube, we should figure out if I can help you get that limit removed you know you've done all this for the community you've built up all these subscribers uh so send me an email whenever you get around to it and then we'll see if we can get you get that lifted so you don't have to start from scratch with a brand new youtube channel but all that being said let's say that doesn't work out everyone on the internet keep an eye out for flying wonky 2014 which is the new youtube channel that he's gonna be uploading all that tech and content to Another yeah, thing. I'll probably update it on the ATP site as well. Yeah, so. I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, yeah, just keep an eye on all that shit, you know, because to stay up to date with what's going on uh, in Tekken. Uh, another thing that I wanted to talk about before we move on to the Tekken Resolute thing uh, is that I talked to Markman recently, uh, and Markman said Ooh. that they are going to hook us up with a new, another wave of arcade sticks to sell through the ATP store at a discounted price. I don't have details yet on what arcade sticks they're going to be or what the prices are, but you can assume that it's going to be a pretty solid deal. And a huge thanks to Mad Cats for supporting the stream as well as ADARC. Uh, I don't know when, exactly when that's going to happen, but I just wanted to give you guys a heads up because a lot of people have been saying, oh, you know, Eris, I missed out on the dope deal on the Korean sticks. You know, when are you going to get more, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't know exactly when, but just keep your eyes on the website because that's probably going to be... Uh, happening sometime soon now all that being said and done Tekken Resolute um Beal take it away <laughs> all right well Tekken Resolution right now in the Japanese version updated to allow uh, it added Bob and it has a unlock for Eliza so let me link a YouTube video of uh, Rip actually playing against Eliza in arcade mode so the problem with Eliza right now is it requires 
twenty thousand blood seals to unlock, and you'll get a random number between one and I believe fifty. Hold on a second. It only requires ten thousand to unlock her. It requires oh, uh, once you get ten thousand of those blood things, you unlock the character, and then getting twenty thousand unlocks all of the items and whatever is related to the character. I think maybe a bikini or oh, something. Okay. Yeah, I heard that one, but I guess that's confirmed. So 10k to unlock, 15k for the premium effects, and 20k for the full alternate costumes. I can't confirm that. That's only what I heard from, uh, yeah, no. um, what's his name? Uh, Kane. That's what Kane said. So I was thinking he's probably right because yeah. that character was made for him. So, uh, you know, I, I tried I tried all morning to get that shit, and I got like one one hundredth of the way there. I got like 400 blood things, and you yeah, need like 10,000. Someone was doing calculations in your chat and was saying like, okay, you get this many points in this amount of hours. It'll take you about 120 hours. 120 to hours of playing... To get 20k, but but if you're if it's half, then you, you only have to do 60 hours. Sweet, <laughs> that's not so bad. Uh, that's not bad. Torturing yeah, yeah. yourself for 60 hours sounds badass. Um, right. Yeah, were you able to catch a video of how uh, she actually plays these your moves? Uh, I mean, I watched half of uh, the video that Rip put up, but I mean, it's so hard to really. I mean, the the AI just does dumb shit all day, you know. So I'm more interested yeah. in playing the character, and that brings me to. Um, the idea of having to jump through fucking hoops to unlock a character like this. Now, personally, I gotta say that Tekken Resolute, though I am a fan of the game, I think their their whole system of it being their their model of uh, their free to play model is fucking stupid. And but, let me explain yeah. why I think it's stupid. The reason I think it's stupid is. You already have a fan base for Tekken. Obviously, this game is free to play so it can reach out to more people. People that perhaps would have never tried Tekken. And they'll see, oh, this game is free. Oh, this guy looks like, you know, Bruce Lee. Or this guy looks cool. He's got a Jaguar mask on. I like Tekken now. That's the theory. However, they do have fans that like Tekken already. Me being one of them, right? This type of free-to-play model that Tekken Resolute has fucking sucks because it, like, tortures your Tekken fans. I mean, I'm a Tekken fan. I want to buy this game. You don't have to give it to me for free and make me jump through hoops for this shit. All you got to do is put a price tag on it, and I'll buy it. I like Tekken. You already got me sold. So I don't understand why a company would release a game that does one thing that they're trying to do, but... As a side effect, all the Tekken fans are collateral damage here. We're already Tekken fans. I want to just fucking buy Eliza. Why can't I just buy her? Why do I have to put like six dicks in my mouth and twist them counterclockwise for 160 hours just so that I can figure out how to play this new character? It really doesn't make sense. And another game that came out that's also free to play that does that very well, and I have to give them credit for it, is Killer Instinct. Why not? That's the way to do it. The game comes out. It's free if you want to play it. It has a rotating number of characters like League of Legends, one a week or whatever. And if you want to buy it, you put a price tag on that motherfucker and all the Killer Instinct fans are going to boom. They're going to buy it. So I see no downside to the Killer Instinct slash League of Legends free-to-play model. While in the Tekken right. Revolutions model, I see tons of downsides i myself have been experiencing it all day you know i'm dealing with this army of lily matterhorns and law dragon tails combined with invincible moves it's like just walking through a fucking it's like rixta walking through uh, the shower at the gym just dicks everywhere at eye level you know it's unacceptable you know torture and I'm a Tekken fan, so I really don't, um, though I support the game and I like the game and I support Tekken 100%, I don't like this model, you know? Uh, it's just not uh, smart to me. What do you think about it, Bill? Well, I, I agree with you. That right now, it looks like they don't actually have a very solid monetization model. Um, like, if you look at uh, Facebook or mobile games, they want to make something difficult, but not, like, unachievable. And then add something that you could buy to make that thing easier. So they already did like half of it by making it really hard to, you know, unlock this character that everyone wants. The, the problem is they didn't add in the extra part and put a price tag on the making it easier part. 
Yeah, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, you got to be a regular Derek to, uh, you know, unlock a character like this. Like, it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense. So few people will be able to do it. I mean, it, uh, it's like, if I were able to just buy the character, right, I would be able to stream it. I would be able to, let's say, um, you know, show people what Eliza looks like so perhaps they could buy it. It just seems like in every way if they made the character purchasable it would be better i think the only counter argument to that would be that in order to obtain her you now kind of have to buy tickets so i guess you're gonna end up buying you know gold premium coins which is really fucked up it's like such a fucked up way to make you unlock her it's, it doesn't add up to me but I mean, it's, it's a very, very short-term view, because in the long term, it, it actually, you know, gets people to not really like the game as much. They get worn out. It's, it's going to be a grind. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a grind, but it's not just a grind. It's a money grind, too. Like, it's going to cost you money, you know? You're going to have to buy tickets. Uh, and I don't really, I don't know if I like that, you know? I understand that they're trying to get, get people to buy tickets, but you'll make money if you get, let the character be purchasable, too. I don't know uh, why they wouldn't do it. Five bucks. Boom. Eliza. Growing titties. Easy peasy death stroke. What else do you want? You know? I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes their business des decisions at Namco are a little suspect. Uh, you, you do remember the Snoop Dogg stage. Who could forget that? So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. But uh, what else? You, you said you did an outline again, Beal. What else is going on in the news? All right, uh, let's talk about Tekken Riot. So Tekken Riot is uh, supposed to be an online Tekken league where it's on, a, I believe, the East Coast and the mid, like mid uh, America, where they they're playing to be captains, and then the captains gets to gets to pick teams to do a, like an online league thing. Um, Potato Galvan just just won the <laughs> previous one. He became a captain. Nice work by Potato Galvan. But you know what I'm wondering is. Would it be more transparent of Tekken Riot to name themselves Tekken League or Tekken Legends? What the fuck? Does and that also, mean? where's also where's the West Coast representation in this online league thing? Uh, first of all, I don't. The first comment you made, I don't understand it. What do you mean Tekken League or Tekken whatever? It's already oh, titled it, Tekken it, Riot. It, it. I mean, it sounds like it's trying to carry on the popularity of Riot Games, which is you know the, the guys that made League of Legends. Uh. Okay. Um, oh, it's, it's just a name thing. Cool. Good shit. Right. Uh, what's the other thing you said? Um, oh, West, West Coast, Coast representation. Yeah. Uh, you I, know, I, I, see, remember that see, thing have that a... uh, Arturo did? He did like uh, uh, a while ago. Arturo did something maybe called the IFL, the Iron Fist League. And uh, they had like it was with uh, Anakin and they did a lot of online matches of some sort. Uh, it seems like the East Coast is kind of really all about that, and they're all about doing online leagues and online tournaments or something, so... I don't know. Well, West Coast doesn't really like that shit, I guess. Um, maybe it has something to do with the fact that the West Coast has... Not has, but the West Coast was more of an arcade region, or at least it lost its arcades later than the East Coast. Seems like the East Coast has uh, embraced the concept of online... Uh, competition a lot more uh, invitingly than the West Coast. The West Coast seems like collectively they all really don't like or um, consider online to be even worth half a shit. That's the yeah. that's the smell that I get from uh, the whole yeah, thing. It seems like we're still raging a bit too much on online. When I hear people on the East Coast or whatever talk about tech in online, they, they don't really get as angry as we do. Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe that is the case. I don't know. I personally, uh, and I mentioned it early uh, earlier in the show, I think that online is definitely a usable tool, but the results of online, the actual results of who's winning is literally next to meaningless. It's really meaningless. Like, you could lose a thousand times online, and if you have the right attitude, you will learn from those mistakes and apply those 1,000 losses and get a tournament uh, win or whatever in the next day. So it's really what's interesting about what makes this whole package really interesting to me is that there is also a stream for me and everyone is watching me. So it's really a test of willpower to, to lose and then think to yourself, okay, Eris, 
Don't panic. Don't get pissed because you learned three things in that match. Don't forget those three things. It's all right. You lost. No big deal. But then you look over at the chat and everyone's like, oh, air is getting bodied. They're just partying in there. Salty. Just talking shit 24 hours a day in there nonstop. Bo, 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 bo. So, you know, it's like a test of willpower. You know, you have to see this bullshit in the chat. You have to see Lily's wind pose where she's walking away talking shit. And it's like, you know, it's really a test of your human abilities, you know. So. It's interesting to me, and I definitely think that ha were I not to be a streamer, and if I only played Tekken online myself alone with no chat, it would be much better. I would be able to just focus and, you know, maybe have like a stress ball or one of those, something that'll relieve your stress, but at least you can take things away from online matches and apply them, you know, uh, in a in a proactive way that's what i'm starting to think and it would be a lot easier if i didn't stream so you know if it's if it's doable by myself anyone who's watching can definitely do it themselves as well especially if you don't stream uh anyway go on beal uh let's talk about uh some other happenings right now i believe people finally figure out why link isn't in uh soul Calibur 2 hd online that's because the creators of their life got them first. They're actually making the that's right, Tecmo Koi, the creators of Dynasty Warriors, is making a Dynasty Warriors game based on Legend of Zelda called Hyrule Warriors. So I'm wondering if that's if he's gonna appear as a guest character in the next Dare Alive on the Wii U. Maybe he's like suddenly female link. Damn, that that tidbit of news was way beyond my jurisdiction. <laughs> like, well, okay. Well, yeah, you Dynasty know, Calibur, Warriors. I don't know anything about. <laughs> yeah, right. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh yeah, saying. even even Sophia is doing a you know guest work in those Dynasty Warriors games. And she's like in the latest one, Warriors Orochi Free, I believe. Cool, good shit. But, yeah, people, you know, guest characters are getting around. I guess so. I mean, I'm I've never really been a huge fan of guest characters. I feel like guest characters are like especially when they're stupid ones like fucking um Spawn. Uh, who? Spawn? No, I mean Spawn is uh less stupid than like uh Darth Vader and Yoda. Darth Star Vader Killer. and Yoda was just like, "Whoa, are you fucking kidding me? Fighters Mega Mix? You know, what is this, you know, this is the stupidest shit I ever seen." Daytona uh, car? Yeah, really. I know. You know, I just, through my uh, painstaking process of getting a Japanese PSN account, realized that Fighting Vipers is available on PSN. Did you know that, Buell? Really? Do you have any? It's, it's a Japanese PSN download, but do you have any, like, oh. insight on that? I'm going to look into that. Um, well, I mean, the Japanese marketplace has a bunch of games that we don't actually have, but as long as you have that Japanese account, you need to, you need to buy a actual Japanese currency to add to that account before you get to buy the, that stuff. What the fuck does that mean? How do you do that? I'll probably YouTube tutorial it, but go on. I mean, you basically buy, like, you know, Japanese PSN cards or you, uh... I can't well, just yeah, you, check you, out and say, charge me? No, you can, because I don't believe you can charge, like, uh, to an American address, so you can't really use your, your charge card that way. Hmm... Well, I'm sure there's some kind of solution to that. And if the solution is not something too painstaking, I just might download uh, Fighting Vipers and stream a little bit of that. I really liked that game when I was younger. I'm sure it sucks now. I haven't played it since I was a kid. But, you know, I like old fighting games, and that one really was cool. I like how you could kick the shit out of someone through the wall and fucking... Walls, yes. That shit was tight, man. Um, but, yeah, and I also, you know, I've been talking about this, but VF is supposed to have some kind of big announcement in December. Hopefully, to me, what I'm hoping, big fingers crossed, is a new Fighting Vipers game. That would be tight. But it's probably going to be something about the new VF, which I'm also equally excited about. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but anyway, go on, Beal. Yeah, I believe it was like the VF 20th anniversary or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, people were expecting like a really big announcement like Virtual Fighter 6 or something like that, but uh, they actually didn't announce anything other than that Akira Yuki is going to be the final boss of Fighting Climax, which is, gonna be, which is one of the 2D anime fighting games. Wait a minute here. So this event already happened? Um, I, uh, so Chris would know more, but I, I remember seeing an event where I, I believe even Harada was there. He was like wearing some anime t-shirt. Huh. 
Well, that's a bummer. Uh, sounds like a bunch of bullshit that I don't care about, which really sucks. Um... I don't know. That sucks. I hope they announce something really soon. I feel like the next uh, VF and the next Tekken are going to be the most exciting, uh, like, iterations of those in those series that are, you know, that have come out in years. You know, the next Tekken is going to be awesome because it's going to be so different. And the next VF is going to be awesome because it's going to be so different as well. Are you giving me the finger, Bill? No, no, this just in. Uh, so crazy. Just said that uh, there's gonna be another announcement on the 26th. There you go. Uh, thanks for that. I thought you were flipping me off the whole time. Like, what's up, Ares? Fuck you. <laughs> no, it's aimed aim towards the chat. Oh, all right. Fuck you, chat. Boom. Anyway, go on. Um, I believe that's all my menu right now. That's all you got? Come on, Beal. Get it together. Anything else going on? I feel like I'm forgetting some stuff. Um, there's going to be a tournament in NorCal, I believe, next weekend. Oh, yeah, you were mentioning that. I was considering going, but I think it's going to cost me too much money to drive up there and find a place to to stay, you know, so I don't yeah, know if it's going to be... And I'm looking at the RVSPs on the on the site, and there's only, like, what, five, six people uh, reserved, so I don't think it's going to be that big as well. RVSPs, huh? Yeah. <laughs> RVSPs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyway, um, so we talked about Wednesday Night Fights. We talked about the whole Eliza thing. I'm really interested in uh, seeing how that character works and trying her out. Anyone in the chat or anyone out there who has unlocked her, if you're willing to share your account information, I would love to try her out and uh, stream her for everyone to see. I think I read in the chat that Kane is going to get her soon and stream her as well. So you can check out his stream uh, despite the, f you know, yeah, that reminds me of something. Uh, I got my bitch calling for the day uh, locked and loaded uh, so uh, unless right. you have any uh, other topics you'd like to discuss we can move on to the bitch bitch calling we can't go on to there you know what before we do that uh, are you gonna stream after this um, I will stream it'll be a little bit late because I have to like remove this headset and set everything back up but I'll be streaming hot dog Miami what what's hot dog Miami well, it's that it's that game that's like really influenced by the seventies aesthetic, and you. You mean Hotline Miami? Well, we'll see. We'll see. Oh God, he's got something planned for you. Uh, anyway, internet. Uh, so yeah, BL likes to stream. His Twitch channel is uh, BL Beal or whatever, right? Yeah, BL Beal. Yes. Okay, so make sure you check that out. B L B E E L uh, on Twitch. He's gonna go ahead and stream a little later after the show. Uh, who's your bitch calling, Beal? Oh, who can I call bitch? Rixa, you're a bitch for getting sick. And not showing up to Wednesday Night Fights when we could have, like, one of our biggest turnouts ever. Well, I mean, dude, it's better for him to not show up and get everyone sick than it is, and not get his car towed. Uh, oh. Than it, <laughs> than it really, oh, yeah, okay. I, 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 the bitch, the real bitch is the tow truck companies or whoever called those tow trucks. Yeah, I heard it was the security company that they – that I heard they called. It's so fucked up though, man, because if you really looked at the whole scenario, there are 30-minute parking signs, but they didn't park right. in any of those 30-minute spots. They specifically stayed out of the 30-minute spots. There's no signs anywhere, but allegedly because someone broke into a car nearby – the security company called the cops or called the tow truck company to have them come remove all the cars in the parking lot. The most fucked up thing is right around the corner, there is a business called Super Arcade in which their hours are clearly posted on the wall saying they're open till 3 a.m. on Wednesdays. So it's obvious that these guys in this parking lot are here for the only business that's still open. It's like so obvious that these tow truck guys are just such pieces of shit that they just they know they're like the Grinch. You know, they know they know they're intentionally coming in there and taking these vehicles. You know, it's unacceptable. You know, it really is fucked up. But that's not Wait. my bitch calling. My bitch calling is uh, Kane. Derek is my bitch calling. <laughs> and All let right. me tell you why. When we first, first, uh, you know what? I'm not even going to do it. I'm not even going to do it. It's that, that much of a bitch call, huh? That you, that you can't get it out of, your, out of your gut? It feels like I'm holding a grudge, you know? It feels like I'm holding a grudge, but I might as well get it off my chest. When we first, first started doing uh, 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 Electric Wind God Fridays, which was years ago now, 
Um, we first started doing that, and what we wanted to do with the Electric Wing God Fridays was to stream a Tekken tournament off the Tekken 6 cabinet, um, direct feed off the Tekken 6 cabinet every Friday. The only way we could do that was if I were to purchase an, uh, an item. It's like a... It's like a capturing device. I don't even know what it is. Oh, the, the capture cards. Well, it's not a capture card. It, it's like this box that you needed to get from this website that's very specific that removes the DRM or whatever it is from the arcade uh, machine, right? Ooh. I needed to purchase this thing in order to do that. Uh, and it cost like $270 or something like that. And Derek had one at the time. He owned one that he was not using and he was attending Electric Wing God Fridays. And he only let me use it one time. He let, he let us borrow it one time. And during that one time, he said, you know, you can never borrow this again. I don't know why, but that really, uh, I didn't appreciate that, Derek. So you're my bitch of the week. I had totally forgotten about that. And earlier today when you were saying you'd like to be on the show, I would like to have you on the show. But I, I remembered that, and I didn't like that shit. He was like, you can't borrow my capture device. Even though I support the Tekken scene, I uh, am going to be at Electric Wing God Fridays. You still are not allowed to borrow this device because uh, for no reason. He was just like, that's it. I'm only going to let you borrow it one time. Fuck you. So I basically had to fork over 200 and whatever dollars. Uh, and people were uh, kind enough to help out with that and donated to help me buy that uh, in, in order to do that. Now, uh, since I gave that device, I gave it to Commando. He, he has it now. It's his. And he does whatever he wants with it. You know, I gave it to him. but Because uh, I don't even necessarily know how to use it. I just did that because I wanted to... Um, you know, do that EWGF. So basically, that's my uh, bitch calling of the day. Now, to uh, retract some of that bitch calling, I think he is either streaming now or going to be streaming soon. And I think he did get Eliza. So, Internet, you can go ahead and check out his uh, uh, Twitch channel. I think it's Hello Mr. Brahms, B-R-A-H-M-S. Uh, so you could check that out if you're interested in, in Eliza. Uh, you got anything else to say, uh, Beal? Because I'm about oh. to cut this motherfucker. Well, I mean, I'm just trying to figure out why he, he was that reluctant to lend it out in the first place. Don't ask me, but I need to cool down. All right, all right. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, I'm about to... Uh, it's not a my car being towed. One time I actually found a tow truck putting the hook into my car. And I was like, hey, I'm here, I can move the car. And they're like, yeah, you want us to move the hook? Give us 50 bucks. Yeah. 